Hi guys, Jeff off the gridiron. I've just come back from Harvest Gathering 2019 in Little Britain, Ontario. And let me tell you, other just like a comic nerd going to a Comic-Con convention, uh, this is exactly what uh, bushcrafters uh, thrive on. Uh, this is my first, uh, and I can honestly say first of many to come. Uh, it was an outstanding, outstanding. And I've come home with so many ideas. Uh, I, I met uh, Jeremy, one, uh, one wild crafter. Uh, his, he, him and his uh, wife Delphi doing a big, uh, big wild year, uh, eating nothing but, uh, uh, kind of cotton cooked, uh, kind of edible wilds and, uh, nothing processed, no sugars at all. Uh, so that, that was great to meet him. Uh, also, I mean, you just come away, uh, there was passions of mine all over the place. There was, uh, level 111 blacksmith shop doing, uh, some demonstration. Uh, we had, uh. Scraping of deer hides, uh, tanning of uh, sheepskins. We had some bow drill fire demonstrations. My friends at Oshawa Bushcraft were putting on a number of different uh, displays and turn it, you know, including soapstone carving. Uh, I was talking to another uh, uh, bearded heron uh, leather work here locally to town and uh, doing leather craft. And uh, everybody's carrying all these all these awesome knives and. I just come away with so much inspiration. I don't know what to start and what video to make next. And, uh, you know, just a passion of mine is knives. So I've uh, obviously digressed in this video back to those those things. So what we have for you is uh, I've got an evening just to see what happens. This is an old uh, Vitronox steel carving knife, it looks to be. Uh, Ladva R. Um, the handle's all split. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a thrift store find. But I'm sure I can make it into something uh, kind of worthwhile certainly the steel uh, sounds like it's uh, it's good quality so we're gonna start by hammering off these uh, these scales off the side and have a look at what's underneath in terms of uh, the handle uh, contemplating reprofiling the blade obviously I want something much much smaller and uh, from there we're just uh, gonna have some fun and use today's inspiration to uh, kick off a new build so stick around and uh, let's get this knife in the vise and uh, see what happens hi guys welcome back Jeff Allen off the green iron First thing we got to do is uh, take off these old kind of shoddy wooden scales. So uh, we're going to try to punch them out first and uh, see if they'll peen out. And if they do, great. If not, well, we'll just uh, break up the wood and grind them all. With this uh, kind of funny, funny handle on here, we might have to go right to uh, kind of uh, touching it with the saw and breaking them off one at a time. Now we'll see what happens. So what I'm going to try to do is come up with a chisel and see if we can just crack the wood, split the wood, and peel away pieces at a time. That should split right along the uh, Well, it is good hardwood, that's for sure, but uh, it's coming off, so. Right by hand. You can see they're, they're relatively kind of false, false pins in there, so we'll just keep smashing away here, and this handle should come right off. Obviously not a full tank construction, but that's exactly what we need. Get off and get these pins, pins punched out. And we just 
touch them on the grinder and that might do it. Well, I don't even know if they're aluminum pins. They're pretty soft. So there we go. And uh, we're going to take that over to the uh, belt sander and uh, clean that up a little bit. Okay, with the scales removed, we can see the uh, existing holes are still there. We can probably probably reuse those, maybe with a, a similar size pin, and uh, adjust our handle so uh, uh, even though it's not a full tang, it'll uh, certainly be comfortable. I think I like uh, I think this blade width is a little too much, and I think I'm going to grind it down to uh, try to keep that that logo on there, and then reprofile it into. Uh, something just along here and then yeah, up so we're going to uh, dig out some other knives that i have to uh, try to get an idea what uh, what profile like one of the other homemade knives this was made out of uh, uh some some uh, an old i guess it was an old uh, sawmill blade but uh, i have like I, I have really liked that kind of belly on there kind of a kept art um, meets Russell look to it. Uh, I know I've lost the the point in the tip over over many different kind of contour contouring of this knife, and so I've kind of lost that that point. So I'd like to bring that back. So what I'm going to do is just lay it on here and uh, trace out the pattern. It's almost just a little thinner than that, probably about a more a uh, more knife thickness. Um, if you're familiar with those knives and uh, so we're going to try to get this traced on here and uh, decide where to go next probably onto the grinding wheel extend that point all the way up I'm not sure I don't want this to be a skinning knife I do want a bit more of a point I think I might create a couple of different markings here um, to get a good idea of that that uh, contour that I'd like I do want a point I do like a, a bit of a belly on the knife um, I do want to make a little fire steel choil somewhere here I don't know, I, I often like to use the back of the blade to do that, so I might do a little kind of little grind out dedicated to the fire steel once I put a handles on there. But uh not sure, not sure if I, how how much of a belly I want on this one. Or if I want it a little a little straighter. Because once you cut it off, just like here, you can't put it back on. We're going to go something, one of those maybe. So as I'm brainstorming using the Sharpie, I, I've realized, uh, you know, I can't see the, the exact line that I want to use anymore. So one of the things I can do is just take, uh, take acetone and clear the blade. That'll actually help remove some of the, uh, the gum residue and whatnot off, uh, off the blade, off the handle. But uh, we're not too worried about that right now. We're just going to spend a few minutes more kind of just deciding on our profile. Now, this Mora is uh, <clears throat> kind of what I was going after, but I wanted something thicker to incorporate this logo. Again, this is so hard to see, this logo. I think that's kind of kind of nice on there. There's that logo. But then I have to incorporate the grind line, which is... Uh, um, you know the, the bevel down to either a scanty grind or or a, a similar grind. So I'm trying to use the, uh, the ruler this time to lay it both the the cut line and the top of the grind line. So I leave myself enough blade that I can uh, put an adequate edge on it.
I think I'm going to go with something like that and then make a decision here of the, uh, the sweep and how that tip is going to roll up into a, into a point. It's not the thickest of blades, so there is some flexion to it. Uh, so I don't want to extend it too far. It's not going to be a heavy duty chopper at all. So there's no real point in getting it overly long, but uh, I want to kind of round it up kind of a, almost, kind of like a falk even. Uh, if you're familiar with that design. So, I'm going to try to just settle on a curve here. So, I think I'm going to go with something like that. And that would be roughly, roughly five, five inches. So, we're, uh, we're going to chop off this end. And if I do it carefully, there's a chance I can use this later as um, kind of a, a backup, uh, you know, a little, I could probably make it into a, a neck knife of sorts if I'm uh, careful with my cutting. So uh, just to salvage that piece for another time. If it turns out to be really good steel, that'd be a great idea. All right, now I'm going to use a four inch, four inch grinder, throw some sparks and cut that off. I think that could be profiled into a neck knife pretty easily. It wouldn't be a full tang one, but uh, certainly a nice little minimalist style. So there we go, something like that. Now what I'll do is take it to the, uh, the other grinder and uh, clean up that edge. I might be able to do it with this one. Well, the, uh, <laughs> I can tell from the, the quality of those sparks, this is super sharp steel and uh, obviously stainless. So now we're going to take it over to the, uh, the grinder here. And I want to be really careful. I usually hit the grinder, and if I'm not careful, I, I, I mark the blade up pretty bad. And uh, it looks a little too, uh, too butchered uh, to be happy with. So we'll try to get a rough grind on there uh, and then uh, see what we can we're gonna try to follow, clean that edge up, and then hopefully profile it using uh, maybe a, some kind of a jig of sorts. But uh, feels good. So I just uh, grab some water, and that way I can keep the keep the steel cool as I'm working. You don't want to overheat the steel. All right, glasses on. Safety first. Okay, this is uh, my least favorite part, and uh, uh, I'm always so nervous about putting the actual uh, 
bevel on the knife uh, because I just feel that it's that really makes or breaks the uh, the appearance of the knife. So we're going to go pretty easy. Uh, we're going to try to follow that uh, that kind of contour line uh, somewhat, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens. We're going to use a, a belt uh, instead of the uh, actual uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the the grinder itself. We're just going to use this belt and uh, try to take it easy and take a little bit off at a time. And, and uh, uh, here we go. We'll see what happens. Might have to go with a better, a little more aggressive belt. Okay, I finished up on the uh, the one by thirty belt sander, and there's a bit of the profile there. So it's starting to take some shape. I'm not going to go too crazy with the uh, the grind just yet. I'm going to hit it with the uh, uh, do it by hand with my my other sharpening system, but that gets me a bit of a start. And uh, now we'll try to figure out a handle. So I found some uh, some wood I think will work well for scales. Uh, almost shimmering. It's almost like a. I'm not sure if you recognize what kind of wood that is. Let me know. It's almost like a. I don't even know. I want to say bird's eye ma maple, but I could be mistaken. So. Uh, We'll cut off a couple of scales and uh, get it centered up, epoxy to it. Okay, what I'm doing now is I've taken that wood and prepped two, uh, two wooden scales, darken the end there, put a chamfer at the top. And uh, so now we're going to piece them all together. All the holes are lined up and uh, add epoxy and uh, put this in the vise overnight.
pretty quickly with this stuff. This is five minute epoxy, so I may not need to wait all night before I start working on it. Or working with it. I'm actually just using galvanized nails. I have no no pins left at all, which is a bit of an afterthought. had super cool liners to put inside these but they didn't work either so So, a little too thin, I should have had liners inside, didn't line up properly putting it together, but uh, oh well, I guess we have another, another utility knife of some nature. Again, when I rush the handle, I always, uh, you know, cut corners and uh, sure enough, I cut the wrong corners this time, but oh well. I have a functional blade here for the handle on it for nothing else. Everybody needs another shop knife. So I came down to my shop and here's my old uh, sheath and it fit in and it actually kind of matches. Not really excited about those grinder marks but I, uh, I didn't want to take any more material off and I think I'll work that into a, a pattern with my laser engraving machine much like covering up a, a bad tattoo. But what I wanted to show you, I had this plastic and it fit the gap perfectly. So with a little bit of glue I inserted a liner on the one side and it actually cuts down into uh, into the bottom of the uh, the handle and coming around and meets and creates that full tang uh, appearance, albeit uh, this white liner. So that's going to dry up there, and then I'll trim it all off and uh, give it a couple of coats of uh, something. And uh, there we go, matching matching set. So as it were. All right. Well. That's uh, that's all for tonight. Uh, so what I did, I wasn't, uh, I shut the camera off. I wasn't super happy. I had this big crease in here. It wasn't a full tang. And I had this big gap um, all the way through the, uh, the you know, the half of the, the blade. So as you can see, um, I had uh, some plastic and I dropped it in all the way across right through the end. And then it meets up with the uh, the rest of the tank. So I'm at least happy that that's filled. 
provides that extra strength and fills that void. Um, now I can treat this a few times and then completely seal this together as, uh, as one big unit. I'm actually uh, kind of quite fond of it and being that uh, Vitronox, that stainless steel, I can take a piece of uh, pad paper and this is very, uh, very flimsy, very flimsy paper and oops. All right, well, <laughs> maybe I don't have quite the edge on it that I need to have, but uh, it's, it's certainly getting there. The thicker paper downstairs I cut without a problem. Actually, I was making feather sticks with, with, the, with the paper. All right, there. <laughs> it was just hitting a bad spot on the knife. Anyway, as we'll uh, we'll get that buffed out of there, and it fits perfectly and do that wooden sheath of mine so that's it for tonight for sure uh total fun inspiration just hit your garage get uh, get working in your own shop don't forget to click like subscribe and share thanks for watching jeff off the gridiron we'll see you again bye for now